Welcome back to the Average Workshop, everybody. Here's what we got going on today. During the knife giveaway video, I had a lot of requests to show more of the process of how I made the blades for those knives. So that's what we're going to tackle. So during the knife giveaway video, I had this little tiny, it's about two inch blade, you know, just a little tiny, nice little pocket knife. And I was going to make this one as well, but I ended up, the uh, the blade got away from me on the grinder. I ended up ruining it. So I have this leftover piece of some high lay random pattern Damascus. And we're gonna go ahead and make this blade out of this. So I'm just gonna walk you through the whole process. So first things first, what we're gonna do is find out what size our pin is. And then we'll get a hole drilled in this and we'll go from there. All right, so I got my hole drilled. And so what we're gonna do now, and I've got some layout fluid on there. So I'll take the drill bit that I drilled the hole with and we'll stick it in there and then what I'm going to do is just lay out the shape of the knife blade okay so now we have our knife blade shape laid out on there we're going to take it to the grinder and get our rough profile in there all right so we got that flat we got that blemish out on our little homemade wannabe surface grinder. We're pretty good on our thicknesses all the way through. So what we're gonna go ahead now and do is heat treat this little guy. So I also have my homemade heat treat oven. So it's quite the process to heat treat, but first things first, we're gonna do is warm this blade up to somewhere past critical and then let it cool down we're going to do that at different temperatures three times. That's going to be our normalizing cycles. Then we're going to heat it back up to temp, quenching in oil, and that's going to be what makes it hard. After we quench it, we will then temper it, reduce some of that hardness, make it a little less brittle. So let's go ahead and start. Still needs to be tempered, but that takes a lot of time while we're waiting for the oven to cool down. We're gonna go ahead and start working on getting this thing ground flat and smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to our homemade little wannabe surface grinder and get to work.
All right, so we have our profile really close to what we want. So what we're gonna start doing now is checking our fit and start dialing in our fit. And there's a couple key pieces to making sure that fits really well because the last thing you want is a sloppy knife. All right, now that we have our knife all heat treated, we're gonna put some layout fluid on the edge and go and scribe our center mark. That way we have a referencing for grinding our bevels, then we'll go try to grind in our bevels. All right, so <clears throat> we're almost ready to etch, but one thing I do need to do on this knife in particular is that it is not spring assisted. So I need to add the little spot, you know, for your fingernail or thumbnail or whatever to catch it to help open the knife. So we're gonna go ahead and try to figure out how to do that.
All right, guys, this is the best part. This is when we're gonna get to see what our knife is actually going to start to look like at the end. So we're gonna give this knife a dip in some ferric chloride water mixture. So we'll let that sit for a minute and see what it looks like when it comes out. out. Give it a scrub with some stool, steel wool and we'll get an idea what it's gonna look like at this point. And there you go. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, probably not very. But we'll get it shined up and you'll be able to see it better after our next step, which is going to be, we're gonna rinse and repeat this step and then dunk it in some coffee. All right, so we got our knife more cleaned up. And the reason you see a pattern is this is made out of two different metals. And one of the metal contains 2% nickel, which makes it resist the etching or corrosion. And it'll stay shiny while the other stuff turns dark. So what we'll do now is we'll dip this in some coffee. And hopefully what'll happen is the shiny stuff will stay shiny and the other stuff will turn really black. So we'll go from there. All right, guys, let's pull this out of our coffee. See if it did what we wanted. Well, one side looks better than the other. We might need to wipe her down. But that's what it looks like. So there you have it, the rough process of how I replace one of the blades on the knife. Thanks for following along. Remember, if you haven't, hit that like button, subscribe button, and we will catch you on the next one.